This is a walk cycle I made using a tutorial by Sebastian Legg. Uh, the tutorial is called Walk Animation Blender. It's uh, linked below in the description. It's a good solid tutorial uh, and it worked really well for this male figure here. Uh, but because of the issues I had switching it over to the female figure, which you can see happening here, uh, I wanted to talk in this video about how to tweak uh, an animation once you move it between armatures. See, he shows you how to do it using this action editor, which is a great idea. See, if I scroll with the mouse wheel over here to get the rest of this menu, you can see that this is the dope sheet editor here. And uh, it's set to the action editor instead of the regular dope sheet, which you can get to here. He had you set it to the action editor because when you make things with the action editor, then let me scroll over here again. Then you can just select another armature as long as the bones are all named the same way and it's all the same bones. And you can set uh, that armature to use any of the animations you have saved. So here's my list I have here. And here is the tweaked walk cycle for the woman uh, because she has different proportions and I had to do uh, uh, the arms over again in order to stop her hands passing through her thighs. Now I thought that was only going to take me a few minutes to make that change. It ended up taking me something like four hours and it was very frustrating and I'm just a beginner so you know things like this happen but I hoped to save the same kind of grief for other beginners by explaining what not to do and what to do. Now first let me mention that I made this armature using the add-on Rigify uh, in Blender 2.79 uh, it isn't available yet for 2.8, uh, which is uh, at this point still in beta, but I'm recording in that uh, since it's the future. Um, I used the basic uh, meta rig that uh, Rigify uh, supplies, and I even simplified it over that uh, basic rig. Uh, our game uh, needs something that's simpler. Uh, well, that was a big help, um, and uh, how Sebastian showed how to do this was a big help. However, I do want to mention that uh, he he used a very bouncy kind of walk in his illustration. Uh, the legs uh, didn't really straighten out uh, once the foot made full contact. A walk cycle is basically made out of two key poses, the contact pose when each foot touches the ground and the passing pose when one leg passes the other leg. And he explains all that very well. He also has an intermediate uh, up and down pose, which is a very common convention in animation as well. However, there are many different ways to treat both the passing pose and the up and down pose because there are many different kinds of walks uh, that conveyed many different kinds of moods um, and kinds of people uh, and kinds of activities. So uh, I wanted something that was looked very relaxed and so I did not make the up and down poses with the kind of heavy weight on the forward leg that he that he showed. Uh, this is more visible in the female. Uh, the leg is almost straight, uh, which I, uh, I think gives a more relaxed presence. Let me try to quickly show you uh, why things go wrong in this situation. I'm going to hide the male avatar here, and I'm going to turn on another copy of the female avatar that demonstrates this. You see how the uh, elbow region here is jangling in and out? Um, well, on the one hand, this gives you a, a, a nice de demonstration of how 
changing something like that about a stance a person commonly uses changes the mood of that character. Uh, this woman is really strutting her stuff. She's not relaxed like the other woman. Did not want that. So I wanted to get rid of the jangling of this elbow. And that was quite hard to do. Uh, um, at least the way I was doing it. Now let me switch into pose mode by going control tab. Oh, but I, I am not because I don't have the right thing selected. Left click, left click, left, left click. Okay, there. Now we have the IK bone that needs to move to move this arm. Let me put it on top so you can easily see it. This is the IK bone, bone and I'll press G to move it. You can see how it moves that whole arm. These wonderful IK bones let you point something or pick something up uh, without it being an uh, animation nightmare, trying to get all of those, those different bones to be in the right position and look natural between frames. However, uh, you can't use standard views the same way as you can uh, in other parts of Blender. IK bones, in order to allow that arm to move naturally, in conjunction with the pole target bones, uh, let's see, these pole target bones behind there, um, when you move this, uh, it's moving the whole arm in three dimensions. You can't limit that movement to two dimensions the way you normally can in other parts of Blender by going into a standard view. So I tried to very carefully move this a small amount and keep it near the wrist joint so that it isn't hyperextending uh, or that it isn't bending the elbow more than I want. But even though I tried to do that, the final result was always jangle, 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 jangle. So um, after several attempts uh, of doing that, I figured out a few things that help. To show you the process I went through, let us start with the action I started with scrolling across here uh, with the middle mouse wheel. And I started with the walking male action. And I'm going to hide the finished female avatar and everything else. And we'll just look at um, the action I was working on. Now it was somewhere in the middle uh, when I started doing this. The first thing you want to do is right click and put this on the first frame because this is where you should make your reference frame. The first and the last frame of, a, of an animation always needs to be the same. So you need to start at the beginning always, even when you're, you're modifying something. Um, and then uh, it was easier to see in this case that I needed to just get rid of all of these keyframes instead of adjusting them. I have often had the problem in Blender a feeling, a feeling attached to work that I've already done. And I'll keep on trying to fix something because I've already put time into it instead of just deleting it and starting over, uh, which in the end I end up realizing is a smart thing to do almost always. So now if something is taking me more than five or 10 minutes, I try to take a look and ask myself if I should delete it, and usually I should. So B to box select all of these that have to do with the arms, and I'm deleting all of those keyframes. Oh, that got the foot in there too. So Alt A to, Alt -A to deselect. B and delete all those. Okay. Now I'll set this up quickly. I want the IK bone, but it's hard to see with uh, in 2.8 with this display. So I'll switch to wire. This is the IK bone. It's down too far because it has the proportions of the male armature for this, which is too big. Uh, something like that. Uh, the pull target's hard to see in this view, so I'm gonna have to go and pick it like this. Go back into one, number pad one for the front view. Move that with G over behind the elbow. 
Hmm, it's going to be about there because I can see now that this has now been moved too much. This is this difficult thing about animation. Things are interdependent. Okay, that seems better. Uh, I cleared the rotation with Alt R for the female figure. For the male, uh, this kind of posture seems more relaxed, but for the female, somehow, this seems more relaxed. So I often uh, found myself also selecting this instead of this bone when I was working with it. So N, and I am going to lock the rotation on that. So even if I accidentally select it, the, that I don't move it and then not realize and have it cause me trouble. Okay, so that is the setup of the first frame here in the front view. Now I have to do it in the side view. This should be aligned with the back leg, the leg that's furthest from the hand. It, it, you swing your arms according to your opposite leg. So G and that goes back here. And uh, I'm going to tell you why that was also a problem in a minute. But first, I just want to get this reference frame. OK, that seems good. This is hanging down pretty much vertical, not quite. Um, and it looks relaxed. OK, so uh, I need a reference every frame for all of these bones, even though these ones are just following the IK bone uh, because it's being exported to a game engine. So um, I'm going to keyframe all of those. Is the Yes, the pull target is also selected. I'm going to keyframe all of those with I. OK, there they are. And I'm going to copy this pose with Control C. Right click to go to the last frame. And in the last frame, uh, press I again. Now you have your uh, beginning and end for the loop. Uh, and uh, these were previously set up in 2.79 to um, to keyframe the uh, the location and rotation when you press I. Uh, here, it uh, I don't see where the adjustment for that is, but that's explained in the Sebastian leg tutorial that this is a follow-on from, so bear that in mind. Also, another thing is you would normally go to the next frame, right-click, and highlight, well, de-highlight those. Let's see. Alt-A, de-highlight, C, pick all those. OK. Control-V to paste. It says it's pasted, but it has not pasted anything. So uh, this seems to be an issue with the fact that this is currently a beta. At any rate, what came next is that um, I realized uh, I could not, even with the frame by frame pasting of the previous uh, uh, position in the pose, in the in the movement, I couldn't get uh, the the next frame to, to look right uh, with it with the elbow especially. Uh, and eventually I realized that uh, it was so sensitive to the position of the uh, IK bone, I was going to need a reference that was part of the mesh itself, the body mesh that's um, parented to those bones, in order to have something out here right next to where the elbow needs to be so that I know where to position it and that that reference point will always be in the right spot even though the body is moving because this is all moving together. I needed one there, and I needed one down here for the hand. So let me show you how I did that. So to make sure you can see the uh, armature, I'm going to go back into octahedral mode, Des deselect everything with Alt-A, go into object mode with Control-Tab, uh, click to sec this, select this, left click, Tab, and when you do that, everything pops into the rest mode for the armature, which is kind of disorienting and inconvenient because um, you need this to line up to the elbow the way it actually is when it's uh, posing. But that's not a really big deal because we can do extrude this along the x-axis. 
we need to kind of guess where the edge is, but as long as it's consistent, you can do it by eye close enough that it's fine. Edge mode, select this, whoops, select this, extrude it down with EZ, so it's easy to see where it is. And I'll just delete this once we're done with uh, setting up the armature. Uh, it's an easy thing to delete uh, and useful while it lasts. Go back to vertex, select, oops, left click to select, not like the old days, extrude, x axis, and I need to take this all the way over and outside the other side because this is, this hand swings with this leg. So I need the reference for how this leg is positioned over on this side. Uh, and now I'm going to extrude that E and Z down. Uh, go to edge select mode. Turn so I need to see what I'm doing. And Y extrude this. No. Oops. Let's see. E, Y extrude this along the Y axis. Okay. Okay, so the moment of truth here, that's easy to see. Uh, it's not really lined up with the elbow. That's unfortunate, but uh, you can still do this by eye. Let's go over to the next frame we need. Let's see how this is doing. See, it's too close in here. So I'm going to go into pose mode, pick this bone, the IK bone, G to move it. I'm going to press met, uh, shift so I can move this more slowly and more easily see what it's doing. Control Z. I'm not sure where that should be anymore. I'm going to go here. Okay, it was just outside of that on this one. Okay, just outside of it. So if it touches that, yeah, that should be pretty good. That should be small enough that's not an issue. Okay, now I feel more comfortable. Right click. G, shift to make it slow enough. Come on, come on. There we go. Something like that. Still far enough away from here. Actually, maybe too, too far. G again, shift. So you have to kind of watch both of these as you're doing this. It's kind of a challenge for that reason. I don't want the hand too far away, but I do want this. Okay, something like that. And then I go into the side mode, three to see that. And where is my marker? Why well, cannot see my marker? Let's turn off in front. Okay, there it is. I might have made a different material so it didn't blend with the arm. That was a mistake. But for now, for the purpose of the demonstration, that should be enough. G. And I want that in the middle of the hand. Okay. One, because you have to check again because they, they don't move. When you move it in, in the side direction, it's all going to move along this axis. And I'm going to move it back again just a little bit. Okay, that's probably good. So that's what I had to do frame by frame that way. Uh, fortunately, this is just a uh, a 12, one, two, one, two, three, four, eight, 8 frames that I had to make. That's not a big deal. In a bigger uh, animation, this could be um, quite the thing. But sometimes you have to do stuff like this. Basically, I just wanted to show you what some of the pitfalls are, the things that you don't know until you try. And these uh, tutorial videos, they're a wonderful thing. But then when you go to do it, you do all these beginner mistakes. And uh, if you're like me, I get really frustrated and I find it hard. And I wish somebody would make videos for a sort of a kind of intermediate person like me who's learning more. but on my own. So uh, I hope this is useful to you um, and I'll try to make more uh, and better videos in the future along the same lines. Okay, have a good day.